Greetings. So let me get the date and the <laughs> right and the day of the week right today. Just a blur, don't they, people? It's not just me. Today is Thursday, the 21st of January. You know, there's somebody's birthday or something is today. That 21st stands out for some reason. I don't know why. Well, did I wake up feeling different today? Actually, just a little bit, yes. I was directly, like all of you that are paying attention, my life was directly affected by the horrid administration that we just got rid of. So do I feel a sense of, of just relief? Yeah. Am I hopeful for the future? Mm, not yet, no. People just um, constantly disappoint me when it comes to um, the bigger issues. But on a personal level, I'm doing okay. And um, I appreciate reading what you people have to say. Some of you folks write really long things, like the brother from uh, uh, Brazil. Um, a few folks from Brazil write. I do read. I'm not going to respond and you folks who contact me in Messenger, I'm not going to respond, okay? And it's happening a lot, and people are asking questions. Do you want to talk to me? That's nice, but I'm. it's not what I want to do. It may seem unfair, but it's just not what I want to do. It, you know, I'll make these, these videos and talk. Uh, I like visiting in person, but then I get tired of people too, you know? I do. You know, it's like when I have company, it usually gets to a point where it's like, okay, y'all got to go now. <laughs> We've had enough. My, my, my cup is full of love. Go home. Yeah, I like living alone. <laughs> I do. Things pop into my head and then I forget. So let me get this out of the way because I'm going to forget otherwise. Matt with Jazz and Britain. Yesterday, I took the time and gave this a good listen um, I was mistaken. The uh, the recording fidelity of this is, is really clear and really rather nice. Group Sounds 4 and 5, Black and White Raga, featuring John Heisman on drums, Jack Bruce on bass, Henry Lowther on trumpet. And this is not fiery, but this is very good. Now, in particular, Snow, Group Sounds 4, doing Snow. That's a really nice composition. This is English jazz. It's jazz. It's not English jazz trying to be um, Firewalker, Spirit, American John Coltrane. It's these people being themselves. And it's, the audience is really polite. After a while, you kind of, I, I, I couldn't tell that I was listening to a live album. It's so quiet. And the audience is so polite. But this is some fine playing, and the people playing their solos, it's really nice because it's beyond an exercise. Some Now, some great jazz musicians do have recorded solos where they start the solo basically going through an exercise, either a modal or a melodic or a, a scale, until something pops out. John Coltrane was good at that. Um, playing a scale until something, uh, you know, arrives. Boy, did he know how to do that. So they're not doing that on here. These people are expressing themselves. The statements and the phrases that are coming out of the horns are really clear and um, not pretend. Good job on that, Matt, and Jazz in Britain. I recommend this. Group Sounds 4 and 5 on the Jazz and Britain label. I recommend it. Shred Telemann, if you watch this, I want to give you a shout out because um, yesterday I received an email where I'm being uh, commissioned again for another piece of music for... Uh, 
twice the money they gave me, they paid me last year. Now, the deal is um, the dance company, um, Lauren Simpson's company, uh, she really likes what I do. And she said, um, what I'd like to work on with you is something along the lines of what you did on your ear sculpture releases. That's you and me, Brett. Um, that's awesome. So um, we plan to get together here in the near future safely to see for her to give me more direction as to what she's looking for. It's an open book, actually. She likes what I do, but the, the reference in my work to the ear sculpture, I was like, that's pretty cool because that, that references you as well, uh, Brett, Shred Telemann, stuff that we did together. More on that as it develops, but that's great news because I um, am not under any pressure, feeling any pressure to do anything, to make any music or anything. I had started um, a collaboration with Talam McDonis. I've talked about him, the pianist. And it's not so much that I've started the... Yeah, I have. We traded We traded a couple things, but nothing sparked. And at this time, I don't feel any pressure to create. If something happens, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So, that's some good news regarding the, um, the commission. I love it. One of my commissions is online, um, not directly, but there is video of the dancers performing and the music's in the background, but it's not direct. I'll try to remember to put a, a link. Okay, so what did I play yesterday? This will be not too long, but long. Marcus Pop of Oval. Pop, I think, is the name of this album. Oh man, I like this a lot. I played this probably five or six times, both sides in a row yesterday, as it just hung around and smoked and did not much. And this was just the textures of the sounds. It was just, oh yeah. This hammer in a bag on the cover. I thought there might be something in here, maybe it's a poster. It's a, it's a good description for this. It's deceptive. The music hits you uh, in a cool way. That was cool. I skipped the blues tracks on here, but I love the Yardbirds. The straight blues tracks are, are straight boring to me. But when they were starting to move into the Renaissance period with, um, with just the, the brilliant pop of over un, under sideways down uh, farewell ever since the world began Roger the engine is what they call this the engineer rather Yardbirds uh, this is an original 60s copy on I don't know how I got a hold of it gong after David Allen passed he gave them the band his blessings and they kept going rejoice I'm dead got this recently and um, I will give it to them. This is Gong, but this is Gong. The album after this is pretty good. This one is still trying to get it back together. Um, overall, this album's not very good. Yesterday in the afternoon, I didn't have one of those moments like I did with Passport or Dave Pike. But around that time of the day, I noted to myself what was playing, and it was Matching Mole's Little Red Record. I just loved this album, and really took the time to listen to the words to the song, God Song, on the B-side. Because a lot of times I just skip over what the words are saying, and I love the words. What they're saying is like, yeah, send somebody we can relate to. What is all this holier-than-thou bullshit? Produced by uh, Brian Eno, um, or rather Robert Fripp with Brian Eno involved. I love this album. The bass player, Bill McCormick from this album is on is a Facebook friend and he is very chatty and very political, very outspoken. Man, he's someone I wish I could meet. Which reminds me, yesterday out of the blue, I received an album, Unexpected, which I like. This one is through Public Eyesore and Brian Day apparently. 
This is a new release called Naturalist Temporary Presence. And it's a release between several um, companies here. But my friend Brian Day is on here. And so is Lonnie Eugene Methy. The other two names I don't re re recall, I don't know right away. But these are things that they recorded, improvised in Beijing, Oakland, Omaha, Pittsburgh, and Shanghai. Overall, this is really good. It's kind of spooky. That's a, looks like it's like a, looks like these are um, hand printed covers. I love it. The first piece was a piano. The Swallows Have Returned, in my opinion, is the clunker. And after that, everything really is very interesting, kind of spooky. This is kind of, it almost sounds like people have done some time traveling and like voices are coming through walls and things are kind of like, it's very interesting. Um, like I said, other than the first piece with the piano for my taste, this really works. And Brian Day as a instrument maker has a sound. I recognize Brian's sound of his instruments. They don't all sound the same, but there's this plunking kind of interesting uh, timbre that I associate with Brian, and it's on here in parts, and it's very cool. It's very cool. Last thing I'll show is uh, another uh, newer music friend that I got to play a show with, Vinyl Williams. Vinyl Williams, I think he's out of Colorado. That's Lionel Williams' grandson, the famous Star Wars uh, theme writer. I love what uh, Vinyl Lionel is doing. John Williams, I'm sorry, John Williams is Lionel's um, uncle, the guy that wrote Star Wars and all that great movie music. This guy is a trip. He's a dreamer, kind of a cosmic head that I relate to. Um, he does these graphics, computer graphics, wonderful. Got to play a show with him, and we hung out tough. And uh, what was ne nice was that he was genuinely impressed with my band, Chemicals. And so we established contact, and we're still in contact now. And he's bought some of my records. And he's written to me about, um, oh, I can almost get, I can't think of the title. There's one where he wrote effusive about the, what it did to him. It just really... He got a lot of light out of the... It's on my Derek number 2 album on vinyl. It's not on the CD. These things mean a lot to me. This is, this, is, this is really the part of the music world that I wanted. Not the fame and the girls and the fake shit on TV, but the connection with people. I could just go on and on, but I'm going to stop here, folks. You know, talk to me. I care about you. I hope you care about me. I'd like to understand why people are uh, still hating. I don't understand it. I really don't know what the what the uh, purpose is. So let's try to move past that and go up. Let's take it up higher. <laughs>